Hello, it's Debbie Gilbert from the Business Awards Show, and I'm also the founder of the Best Business Women Awards. Today, I'm joined by Maggie Sarfo from Meris Consult, who is a personal and business growth coach. Hi, Maggie. Hello, um, Debbie. Maggie um, was a judge at the Best Business Women Awards this year. So today, our topic is around judging, what judges look for, what excites them about entries. And so we're going to be hearing some of that from Maggie's experience this year, judging the awards. But first, we like to know more about the person that we're interviewing and about their backstory. And Maggie has 19 years of business experience. So Maggie, tell us a bit about your business. Thank you, Debbie. Well, firstly, I am so, so excited to be here. And I just love, you know, the the type of audiences that they have crafted to your business awards work. So thank you. Oh. Um, so um, a bit about me. So my business is Meris Consult Limited. It's a business and personal growth consulting firm. Um, we work predominantly with individuals, business owners and entrepreneurs, and also business leaders in the corporate world as well. And it's all about exploring new ways of being, new ways of leading, and new ways of growing their businesses exponentially, and also tapping into their own highest potential. So here's the thing, like most business owners or leaders who provide meaningful services um, to others, sometimes avoid growing in a big way. They might find it too daunting or they may not be sure how to do it. And so that is where we come in um, through Mary's Consult My Business, we enable these leaders to grow exponentially. Um, and we do this through one-to-one um, -one mentoring programs and coaching programs. We also do this through group services. For instance, we do have speaking engagements and, and also training and workshops as well. And it's all about enabling the leader, the business owner, or the individuals to tap into their highest potential and they can bring this to the next level. Um, for instance, Claire, who happened to be one of my, my clients, said, I feel so much on purpose in my life, in my relationships, in my finances, in my business, and much more. So we approach it in a more holistic way. Um, and we always say that when it comes to us, um, growth always meets transformation, whether this is to do with your personal life or your business life. Um, my background has been in... Um, business consulting and advisory um, as well as sales and sales leadership yes so I I spent a lot of time understanding businesses earlier on in my career I was offered an opportunity to um, go and do a master's in public administration because I started my career um, in the HR department of a university library um, but then when I was offered this opportunity I kind of weighed things up and then I realized that I was very, very curious and passionate about why some businesses grew profitably and why others didn't. And that was so intriguing to me that I had to turn this beautiful offer to go and do a master's in public, um, public administration down in order to pursue my passion in businesses and how to make them more profitable and grow in a big way and create a, a much bigger impact as well in that in our world. So, so that's my motivation. I get really excited every time I see, you know, businesses doing what they said they would do and impacting our world in a big way. Um, so it's been a journey. So you mentioned 19 years. So it's been a journey. One thing I knew for sure was the fact that I wasn't your typical employee. So I spent 15 years of that journey. No, not 15. Um, well, so 15 years in the corporate world and then another six years because my business is six years this year now. Um, but what I found was I didn't quite get the whole idea of being paid a salary and carrying on with it. And so that is why I transitioned into doing consulting, into doing more kind of sales and growth consulting work. And also in some cases I took on um, individual contributor roles as a salesperson and then that grew into managing teams as a sales leader mm -hmm. I think I always felt that when we put in the effort we deserve to get you know the reward that comes from it and so I prefer to be paid a base salary and then be paid a commission on top 
that signifies the effort, the extra effort that I put in my work. So for me, that worked really well for me. And I've brought that into my work is about delivering value and also being able to then own your worth as a business owner, as a business leader, as a group of leaders within an environment, as an individual as well, and, and see what it takes to be a profitable business, but also making it very human centered. So with my work, we bring in a lot of what I call blueprints to the table, um, frameworks that allow you to take the business from one level to the other, but focusing your attention on the human that you're serving, um, what connects you to your customers and what problem you're solving, you, you solving for them, but what enables you whether it's a big brand or a small brand, what enables you to connect more deeply with the person you're serving so they can also open up and you know, show you some of your problem, their problems. And if you're able to solve it for them, being honest and solving it for them in a big way. So that's a bit about me. Um, I'll talk a bit about the other side of my business, which is owning the Athena Network in the city of London, which is um, a women in business and women professionals and executive networks uh, um, network. And these ladies meet on a monthly basis for, um, you know, obviously networking, forming deep connections, um, doing business, and also for their own personal development. And for me, that is such a special part of my business um, because up until I took that on as a franchise coming up to five years now, um, I had worked in more male dominated environments, you know, being in a salesperson and a sales leader. So I was always one of the few. Even now I sit on boards and I'm always one of the few. So a few women. So I feel that for me, owning that opportunity to own a women in business um, or a woman a women's only business mm. allowed me to connect more with, um, you know, being more feminine and exploring what it takes for us to do business in a way that, A, creates more balance in our world, but also um, it's more aligned to how we network and, you know, the like, know and trust. Another thing that I want to say is the, the subtle transformation that happens in the lives of these women in business and professionals, that is not something I sell, but it's something that comes very naturally when you have a group of amazing women coming together, right? So an example is us seeing some really amazing transformations. Some will, um, you know, grow in terms of getting into roles that they always wanted in their career but they didn't have the courage to go for some will transition you know after a point from their business or the, their professions into owning a business that they always thought they wanted to own but didn't have the courage to um, some will take their existing business to a level that they never thought was possible mm -hmm. and I think all of that comes from the fact that when you bring a group of amazing women together there is a subtle something that makes you know something amazing happened so yeah <laughs> so true and I'm part of one of Maggie's groups so I can personally yes. vouch for you <laughs> as a as a leader but also at some of the amazing women that I've met at those mm. groups mm. um so I invited you to be on our judging panel yes. you can't buy your way onto the best business women awards judging panel you have to be invited <laughs> and you have to have a good long experience of business really because I believe that you can't be a judge in business awards unless you've got a good strong breadth of being in business yourself working with businesses which I thought that was mm -hmm. why I thought you'd make the ideal judge because you've mm -hmm. walked along with people holding their hands mm -hmm. trying to get their business to the next level yeah um and therefore you know would have that experience and those analytical skills to look mm -hmm. at an award entry um yeah. You know, there are some awards out there that are done with voting. Personally, I don't think that's a credible business award. Mm. Um, and having a set of questions and criteria that you have to answer um, and fulfill, I think, and then judged by a panel of experts, then I feel yeah. that that is credible. Yeah. So what were your thoughts from the judging that you did this year? 
Um, firstly, I was excited to be invited by you, Debbie, to be <laughs> on your judging panel. Um, it took me right back to, I will say, a few years back, back in 2009, 2009 and 2010, when I judged some West London Business Awards, because I was working for a business advisory company called the Park Royal Partnership. So, and we were invited um, to look at some awards at that time. Um, and I think we did it over a period of time as well. So for me, when you asked, you know, that came back to me and I was like, oh my God, yeah, of course I have to say yes. Mm -hmm. um, and um, having said that, you know, the, just looking at the quality of the entries that came through your awards um, was incredible. Um, I think it allowed me to see, you know, how these businesses have put the effort into the award entries mm -hmm. um, in order to be considered for an award. Um, I think, like you said before, with some awards, you can't compare like for like or apple for apple purely because of the way it's set up. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in the case of your awards, because you, you're asking the same questions, you're giving the judges a clear criteria mm -hmm. of what equates to what kind of mark. I feel that anyone who, who is um, either applying for the awards or who's judging feel very, very supported, is very transparent. And we know that everyone who gets given the award, whether they are actually the actual winner um, the gold winner or a, or a silver winner, I think everyone is a winner in your yeah. award. So that is also definitely something I felt very strongly when I came into the gala. And I'm so lucky I was able to make it because yeah. originally I, wasn't, I was going to be in Vietnam. So I was so lucky that I was able to make it as well. So yeah, I totally respect the effort that goes into the planning and the whole process of your awards. And I feel it's one of the most top quality awards I've ever had the opportunity to be involved in and also to witness as well. Thank you. So when you were looking at the entries, what sort of things uh, stood out for you? What good mm -hmm. things stood out for you? I think firstly, it, it was the stories of the people behind the awards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fact that they take the time to connect their stories whether it's a business owner or just the story of the business and how this is woven into several parts of the awards as they answer the questions from where they used to be and where they are now was something that really stood out for me I think what also really stood out for me were those who were not only saying what they were saying on paper but also supporting that with evidence was mm. crucial right so because for me, I would look at it and say, okay, well done, you said this, but what is the supporting evidence? Because then if I don't have the supporting evidence, how do I give you this mark when you know there is no proof, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I think the supporting evidence that um, entrants have you know, put towards to support the stories or the descriptions of their progress or whatever success they're celebrating in the award application is really important. Mm. And then finally, I'll talk about those who go over and beyond, you know, so they show you the X factor. <laughs> um, um, and, and I think that is incredible because mm. again, it goes to show the efforts, both the heart and the mind that they put towards it. They wanted to not only celebrate themselves and their businesses but they want to say recognize you know their customers or their clients as part of the process um if they have a big vision for the business i was very impressed with one particular um entry that actually also showed their business plan going mm -hmm. forward and the strategy and the vision and and i think those are really things that makes you stand out if you are applying for an award what because again, with all types of awards and competitions, mm -hmm. you're coming across, you know, a range of similar type of businesses mm -hmm. who all deserve the award in a way. And so I think if you look into a enter, it's important for you to look at 
what could make you possibly stand out and maybe what is unique about mm. it as well it doesn't have to be the big thing that you have achieved and that is one thing that I really um really admired about your awards because you you also made sure that it doesn't matter how big a business is even if they're small but they have something credible to put on the on the table for us to witness mm -hmm. and award them for that then you you encourage that to happen and the process allows that to happen I think so and I think you know it's not about how big your social media following is Mm -hmm. And this is a, something we've come up every year. Someone will come back and say, well, why did that person get selected? She doesn't have a, as big a social media following as me. Or, you know, it's not about that. It's not even about how big your revenue and your profits are, because if that mm -hmm. was the only measure, mm -hmm. then there are people out there doing an amazing job, yeah. an amazing business. And, and they don't necessarily have the high turnover and the high profits but they're still making a decent living mm -hmm. but they're making such a difference yes. and yeah I think you know it's important to recognize people who have got a good business that serves them well mm -hmm. just because they're not employing hundreds of people doesn't mean that they're not a great business absolutely and that's and what we're out to achieve absolutely and the word that comes to mind even as you speak is impact mm. and impact can can be shown in a small way it can be shown in a big way but at the end of the day is, is the impact not just the fact that it's a business with huge turnover yeah. what impact is it making on the people they serve and on the people who own and run it as well exactly and you know if you, you to me you can't win an award based on the number of followers you have on social media mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. as a judge you will know that people can buy social media followers that's absolutely yes you can do that yeah. So what you, you what you're really looking for, I think, with, with what you said was how crucial that evidence that is supplied into yeah. the entry mm -hmm. um, is. And as long, you know, it's nicely labeled and you can find that evidence easily yeah. in the yeah. entry and you know mm -hmm. exactly that that backs up the points that have been made. Yes. So it's crystal clear. Yeah. And it's genuine as well. Yeah. Did you find any entries had you in a bit of a tizzy spin going around trying to find the information or were most of good quality, did you find? So there were, um, I'll say a couple that I was kind of, yeah, frantically trying to find mm. information to support what they were saying. Mm. um and I think when you have too many of those or if you have too many of those in your application it doesn't mm. do much favors because again you know the judges do their best um to to make sure they're fair to every entry mm. but it's important that you if at all possible you could make some of this work easier for them and I think if it's if I go out into your social media, into your website, into any other evidence out there, and it's easy enough to find, and it, it mm -hmm. clearly supports the point you've raised in your application, it's easier for you to be awarded the right marks as well, which all Definitely. contributes to the bigger picture. Yeah. I mean, we always advise people to send their entry to somebody else before they submit it and, mm -hmm. and almost get someone who doesn't really know them that well or knows them mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. to go through it and check the evidence and sense check what's being said in the yeah. entry yeah and I think one you can definitely tell the difference between people who have done that mm -hmm. than those that haven't um yeah. because you get a lot of people that rush it at the last minute don't put all the right things in and mm -hmm. submit it and these will be some of the entries that you wouldn't have seen because they don't make the first screening mm -hmm. session that we have mm -hmm. um because often people will copy and paste things off their website and put it into their entry <laughs> or they'll put one or two lines for each question and mm. you know they really haven't answered the question at all no and they'll put a photograph of themselves as evidence for example which isn't evidence at all mm. but what sort of evidence do you like to see so testimonials case studies figures that kind of thing yeah so testimonials case studies on the financial side, you will find that people actually, you know, get the accountant if they have one, 
um, to actually submit an original document, for instance, mm -hmm. or a photocopy of an original document. I think that gives it more clout. Yeah. Um, even if it's, you know, it doesn't have to be too, you know, extremely official if it's private in any way. But I think it's is the thought behind it and being able to show this evidence mm -hmm. in a way that supports that you care in terms of you, you, you want to support what you're saying. So I think evidence on the financials as much as possible to support the point is important. Testimonials are incredible mm -hmm. um, because it's coming from someone who has actually experienced your product or your service. Um, and as they say, sometimes it's, it's always better for someone else to sing your praises. And so those are really, really big ones. Um, the testimonials, if at all possible, to have those that are a bit more objective as well. So for instance, if you have like a Google page or you have a trust pilot page or a Facebook one, and, and you know, if someone has sent you a testimonial by email mm. and you are able to, you know, say to them, could you copy and paste it on my Facebook page as well? I think that is incredible. It's different. And of course, you know, where not possible, then, you know, putting it on your web. Yeah. adding it to your website and you know sometimes you know they may not want you to mention their names that is fine but there are ways around it as well so or mm -hmm. doing those things that makes it more genuine always goes a very long way and for me I like seeing those <laughs> and did you think that the final could be a networking opportunity for people because obviously as somebody who runs Ooh, a networking yes. group yeah you could see that as a potential oh yes absolutely so I mean just on my table, um, I met, you know, some wonderful um, people. And then since then, they have reached out to me. We've had one-to-one -one session or meetings or introductory calls to get to know them better. Um, and, and those who found it interesting to come and visit my women's network in the city, they have done. Yeah. I have also had others reach out to me to connect with me on social media. And I had always offered an introductory call. So at least I had two introductory calls. Um, and this, this lady, you know, she took the time to actually go and research me quite a bit before meeting me on the introductory <laughs> Zoom call. And, and, you know, so she came on the call with a lot of questions that she wanted to ask me. And I, I was also excited to learn more about her. And we've both recommended each other to other people in our network that we feel will support what we're doing. So I think it's, in, it's an incredible opportunity to network and expand your connections as well. Oh, that's brilliant that you've utilised it in that way. And I always love to know that people, we put all the details in the programme, but actually that people go through it, connect up with people that, you know, that they feel could be useful connections for them and that they can support. And um, it's good to hear that I would expect nothing less from you that you had done some of that yeah. because I think you know people miss that as an opportunity at a mm. they sort of turn yeah. up have a few drinks have their meal get their reward and leave and don't actually use the program and all the information mm. we give them about everybody else that's there and yeah. I think there's a golden opportunity yeah. to connect up with other like-minded women yeah absolutely so those I met you know I said before at least on my table where we got to have a chat I connected with them but I don't know if you kind of advise the others to do as well but I've had people connect with me via LinkedIn especially and anyone who reached out to me mm. I did you know offer my congratulations and, and offered an intro call yeah. uh, definitely and I think you know I previously I hadn't thought of it as a way mm. of you know expanding mm. um you know the benefits of the the event um but yeah I, I i took it in the flow and i think it's worked really well so yeah Fantastic. like this lady who contacted me um she's in the pr industry and i had been looking for a certain type of pr digital person to connect with one of my contacts because they they do more like advocacy work mm. so you know when i had a chat with her i was like you are perfect and and so i spoke to this other lady in my network that I connected with her and she said it's just you know such a good match you know 
Brilliant. Another <laughs> added benefit of awards. Um, we like to finish on a business tip. Now, obviously, you must have loads because you've been around the block a few times. But you were talking about at the beginning about people getting stuck and you know struggling to get their business to grow. So mm-hmm. maybe there could be a tip around that. What would you say to anyone who's struggling a bit with their business right now and doesn't really know which way to turn? Mm. Um, it's a great time to look at your business from a distance, I will say. So um, with so much change going on in our environments and in the business environment, I think the worst we can do is miss out on the opportunities by getting too bogged inside the business. And so I think now is a good time for everyone to actually step outside their business and look at it from the top so they won't miss out you know on opportunities or how to resolve any issues that are coming and I would say yeah look at your business from the top and then ask the right questions Mm. and then if needed um, speak to someone you know Mm. someone who could also support you through it but definitely doing a strategic review of the business at this time is definitely a way forward for I think so I think we're all we're going to go through a bit of a tough time I think for the next Mm -hmm. 18 months until things stabilize so I think a lot of businesses at the moment are thinking oh gosh you know this this could be really tricky and I think stepping back and doing a review is really good advice so thank you so anything else you want to share before we go um well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to come to your show today. I've enjoyed our conversation and I hope it adds value to everyone who will be listening as well. Um, if any of you would like to reach out um, with regards to any of the areas we've covered to get today, including potentially visiting some of our networking groups um, in the City of London, we do most of the month, well, we do all the monthly meetings online and we have some optional in-person events as well. So feel free to reach out and I'll be delighted to meet you. (laughs) Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Maggie, for taking the time out today. And thank you again for being a judge this year because it is quite a commitment and you did an amazing job. So thank you so much. And we will put all of Maggie's details into the show notes or into our YouTube channel because this video will be shown on YouTube and we have a audio which goes onto our podcast. So thanks for joining us today. Good luck with the next few months and you know I'm sure the groups will grow even more than what they are at the moment and um and we hope to see you back next year as a judge absolutely yes thank (laughs) Thank you very much Debbie take care Bye. bye bye